Now it's time to move up another layer. I'm going to go ahead and close out of my backpack class here. Uh, in this, we are going to be modifying our player class. Um, so in the player class, you know, this is where I'm going to have to create a, a new instance of, you know, some item just to, to populate it since I don't have anything in the in the game engine set up to where we can actually walk around and collect items. Um, you know, there's no items in here, so I need a way to add these. So this is just going to be a, you know, sort of a, a temporary test. Uh, not the player class itself. That'll actually be important later on. Um, let's go ahead and set up our basic structure. The player class is very simple so far. I'm going to say um, public name as string. And of course, you know, you can set your player name. Most RPGs uh, and a lot of other games have the ability to actually name your character. Uh, this would give you that ability, uh, having a player name. Um, and the second item is going to be, well, a backpack. We just created a backpack, might as well put it on him. So let's say um, public backpack as new backpack. And uh, so the only thing we really need in this class is a new sub. So when the player, cra uh, player class is generated, uh, built for the first time, it'll automatically create, you know, the structure. Um, you may have that parameterized in the future to add the name. I'm just going to be hard coding these values for now, uh, just to keep things simple. I'm going to say public sub new. And in the new sub, I'm going to set the name. Of course, I like to call my little dude Rad Marvin. Yay! You can call yours whatever you like. And this is where we're going to have to, you know, set up some dummy items, just some some test items here. So I'm going to say add uh, test items to backpack. Since we don't have any other way to acquire items, I can't uh, talk to my vendors yet in my game engine. Um, so I'm just going to do a simple dim i as new item. Hey, we just created an item. With i, let's give it some values here. Item. Uh, remember, we have item types. So I'm going to say uh, it's a usable item. We don't really have a purpose for that. Uh, at the moment, just sort of a demonstration. Uh, name equals, uh, you know, I was using heal weed. We can call it medical herb. How about that? That's a classic. Uh, description. You can make the description uh, whatever you want. I don't have a form of text, uh, you know, string wrapping or anything, uh, which you're going to want to do at some point in your, in your engine. Um, is have some sort of text handler to measure the width of your strings so they actually fit inside your dialog boxes. Um, I have, you know, the the space that I have in that actual inventory window is pretty small, and, and of course I made it so we can change that if we want, but, um, you know, I was wrapping that manually, doing VB, CRLF, line feeds, so... Uh, you can set your description to something long like I had uh, in my demonstration. Um, if you don't remember what that looks like, I can give you a little peek here real quick. You know, so this is your description. I had to, you know, make a short line, line break, short line, line break. You know, you're going to probably have some sort of little box for your descriptions, or you may have the description floating over the item itself, you know. Uh, there are different ways to handle that uh, as you choose. You know, you certainly don't have to do it like I do. And by now, you should be, you know, proficient enough after following these tutorials to actually, you know, generate that text anywhere you would prefer to. So, uh, for my description, because I don't want to deal with that right now and create a long string of line breaks, I'm just going to say heals you very imaginative 
Very awesome. Okay, next property we want to set. Is the item stackable? Is stackable equals, um, well, true. I want to stack my medical herbs. So uh, now we want to set the image asset. And I'm again, I'm going to be hard coding this to items. Normally this will be dynamic. It'll be loaded through your map handler class or um, item handler class, whatever you choose to, to, to use. So I'm going to make a little note to myself. To do um, load from uh, item list in map file. How about that? Um, let's see, the source rectangle again is going to have to come from a map file or something, but for now we're just going to generate a manual one. We know the source coordinates of our uh, sprite, and because we're only using one, this is very simple. We'll just say a new rectangle um, starting at 0, 0, and going out. It's a 16 by 16 image. So we'll specify the size of 16 by 16. Again, all that would normally come from a map file or some such thing. So if you're wondering, I'm going to look at our items here. And as you can see, 0, 0 is the top left corner of the image. Out 16 by 16 pixels brings us down here and grabs that uh, source. Now in the real world you're probably not going to have a single item in your game, you're probably going to have dozens in your game. So, um, you know, maybe your red potion's over here and you're going to have to grab the source coordinates accordingly. <clears throat> so you kind of get how that works. Um, now we've created our item, let's go ahead and say backpack dot add whoops not reference equals add our new item now that's not good enough for me I want to add two of them so I'm gonna duplicate this line you can make three or four or five or sixteen test the max on that if you want um, that's it that's all there is to the player class piece of cake